Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me say that I'm grateful for this opportunity to be supporting to be supporting Budget 2021 and the development of our country. Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I would like to express my appreciation and thanks to the Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Kumar Singh, and the dedicated and committed team at the Ministry of Finance for crafting Guyana's largest budget, $383.1 billion. As the Speaker, the People's Progressive Party Civic Government must be commended for presenting two budgets in six months. Two budgets that will right the wrongs of the AP and UAFC government. And Mr. Speaker, while we speak of AP and UAFC government, I'm wondering if there is still AFC. Because I notice the executive members are dropping like flies. Even my friend, the Honorable General Secretary, resigned, but he was cajoled into staying into the position because the party is falling apart. I'm not even sure if they have members or supporters. And Mr. Speaker, if we are trying to categorize the AFC right now, an NGO is not fitting, a trade union is not even fitting because of the people negotiations with the a APNU that is in the Cummingsburg Accord signed on Valentine's Day. So they're even poor in negotiation, negotiating. And as, as accepted by the previous speaker, as accepted by the Honorable Partisan, Mr. Speaker, the PSA was poorly negotiated. The PSA, the production sharing agreement between the government of Guyana and Exxon Mobil EEPGL was poorly negotiated and Guyana got the wrong end of it. And now the honorable member is extending a hand to us to renegotiate or to review. So it is an acceptance, Mr. Speaker, that the negotiation was poorly done. And it was done in a hasty manner. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021, we must say, have no new taxes. Have no new fines, no penalties. Because we were laced with budget after budget from 2015 right up with new taxes, increased taxes, increased penalties, more hardship, more suppression on the backs of Guyanese people. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 will address all these hardships. Budget 2021, Mr. Speaker, will show a real GDP growth of 20.9%. And more significantly, Mr. Speaker, the non-oil economy will grow by 6.1% in 2021. And that is something, Mr. Speaker, that we need to pay special emphasis on, the non-oil economy. Because what we have seen in the last five years is that the non-oil economy was dying and slow natural death. The non-oil economy was dying, Mr. Speaker. Budget 2021 create incentives for the traditional productive sectors, the non-oil sector. The AP and UAFC was taking, out, taking us down the road that so many countries went. So many countries made that mistake to go down the road of the Dutch disease. And that is where we were heading. The APNU AFC spoke about right-sizing or downsizing the sugar industry. Today they come to the National Assembly and they speak about public servants as though they love the public servants. Mr. Speaker, yes, the AP and UAFC increased salary and wages for the public servants, but what did they do on the other side of it? 
Every single budget, they increase taxes, they increase fines, they increase penalties. Costs to living increased tremendously over the last five years, Mr. Speaker. So it, it was like a thief in the night. You give him one hand and you take from the other hand. It was a Robin Hood style of managing the economy. That is what they did, Mr. Speaker. Our aim and budget 2021 aim is to reduce cost of living. When you reduce cost of living, our people will have more disposable income. They will have more money to invest. They will have more money to spend. And that is our aim as a government to reduce the cost of living for our people, to raise the standard of living for our people, to create investment opportunities for local and foreign investors. Mr. Speaker, that is our program. That is our policy. That is how the People's Progressive Party Civic manages. Mr. Speaker, we are not a government that believe in the redistribution of wealth. Apparently, that was the policy of the AP and UAFC government. We don't believe in the redistribution of wealth. We believe in the creation of wealth for every single Guyanese. That is what we believe in, Mr. Speaker. And when I say every single Guyanese, I mean whether you live in the Quarantine Coast, whether you live in the Northwest District, whether you live in the Rupununi, whether you live in Linden or Kokwani. We will provide incentives to all the sectors so all Guyanese can benefit from that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 would lay the foundation for the economic transformation that our country will undergo over the next five years. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 will si signal the resurgence of a vibrant private sector in our country. And last year, we were accused by the very opposition that we presented a private sector budget. Mr. Speaker, we have no apology to incentivize the private sector. We see the private sector as a partner in the development of our country. We don't see them as a competitor. We don't see them as an enemy. We see them as a partner in the development of our country. So we will continue to work with the private sector and our investors, both locally and foreign, to ensure that we build our country from strength to strength, Mr. Speaker. That is our vision for Guyana. And that is what we will do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are some fundamental questions that Budget 2021 will seek to address. These are questions that every single Guyanese will like, or matters every single Guyanese will like to see addressed. One is job creation. Our people are dying, are calling on our government to provide jobs because they were starved of, of, of employment over the last five years. People are, people are dying for more income in their pockets, Mr. Speaker a lower cost of living, investment opportunities, and Budget 2021 will address these, Mr. Speaker. Budget 2021 will facilitate massive sp spending in public infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, this will stimulate business activities, especially in the natural resources sector. And my colleague, the Honorable Minister Colin Kroll, spoke at length of our housing plan and our housing development over the next five years. And the Ministry of Natural Resources is gearing itself to support the developmental plan of the Ministry of Housing and the Government of Guyana. We are not sitting back and waiting like the AP and UAFC did. Mr. Speaker, the demand for stone or aggregates the demand for sun, the demand for loom, the demand for wood would increase exponentially, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, spendings in public infrastructure will create thousands of jobs and develop our much needed infrastructure that our people are crying out for. Mr. Speaker, and how did Budget 2021 right the wrongs of the AP and UAFC? Mr. Speaker, from Budget 2021, every single Guyanese, every single Guyanese will benefit. Our customers of GWI will, in, will enjoy a 5% reduction in their water rates. 
Not only that, Mr. Speaker, but six months after taking government, our government have already reduced our take now VAT of light and water, which was instituted by the AP and UAFC government. We have returned the subsidy to our pensioners on light and water, which the AP and UAFC government took away. Mr. Speaker, our old age, our pensioners would, increase, would enjoy an increase of $4,500. Mr. Speaker, Budget 2021 removed the VAT on building materials, basic food supplies, education, health services. Mr. Speaker, our school children in the public system will not only receive their cash grant from 2021, but they will receive an increase to $15,000. Mr. Speaker, our government took off VAT of logging, of mining, of agricultural equipment, the same VAT that was imposed by the AP and UAFC government. We have removed that in only six months in government. So when, so when, the, Honorable, when the Honorable Member David Patterson spoke about promises made by the People's Progressive Party civic government. These are promises that we are fulfilling every single day, Mr. Speaker. These are the promises that we are fulfilling. But what the Honorable Member don't seem to understand, Mr. Speaker, is that our manifesto is a five-year program for building Guyana, and not a one-year program or a six-month program. Apparently, the Honorable Member doesn't understand that, Mr. Speaker, but it is a five-year developmental program, and we will fulfill our promises in our manifesto. That is our commitment to the people of Guyana. That is our contract to the people of Guyana. That is why the people of Guyana voted for us, Mr. Speaker, overwhelmingly, by over 50%. Mr. Speaker, some speakers on the opposition side will come and say they represent almost 50% of the population, or 50% of the population. Mr. Speaker, as I stand there today, I'm speaking on behalf of all Guyana, not 50%, but every single Guyanese. Every single Guyanese I speak on behalf of, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the AP and UFC talk about hinterland development and incentivizing the, um, the indigenous communities but what did they do? They put VAT on interland travels. They put VAT on inter interland travels. We took that off, Mr. Speaker. We took that off. Mr. Speaker, we have heard a lot over the last few days. And please permit me the opportunity to bring some clarity to some of the mistruths and misinformation that was mentioned in this house over the last few days. Mr. Speaker, if I if may look for us at the word democracy. The word democracy is a word that sh should not be uttered by the AP and UFC. Because it is clear that the AP and UFC doesn't understand the meaning of the word democracy. How can you talk about democracy when you illegally and unilaterally appointed a chairman of the GCOM? Today you're coming here and talk about consultation. How can you talk about democracy when you use SOKU to suppress us in opposition, including our president and vice president? How can you talk about democracy when you were defeated at a no confidence motion and you refuse to accept it because you believe that 33 is not the majority of 65? How can you speak about democracy when you couldn't hold election after one year of being defeated at a no confidence motion? How can you speak about democracy when you try to rig the election? Today you speak about fraud, but rigging is rigging. And that is what you did, that is what you attempted to do, but you are politically maneuvered and outsmarted. You are politically outsmarted, but you don't understand that. You say that is fraud, but that is politically out, being outsmarted. That is what happened to you. Mr. Speaker, we have seen all sorts we have seen all sorts of flimsy excuses and, and dramatics and theatrics at the recount. My honorable member was there every day, like myself. We, we, no, we saw a lot of dead people. We saw a lot of dead people who you claim are dead that voted. That is what we saw. We didn't go Except to the burial. Honor honorable member, minister, I didn't claim anybody was dead. Sorry. So please. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, if I may continue, and I feel as though the Guyanese people and more so the supporters of the People's Progressive Party Civic, which is more than half of our population, and also the sugar workers of our country, I myself being uh, from that background too, that for the honorable member, Mr. Ramjitan, to say that the PUP supporters are gullible or easily fooled is totally wrong. And he must apologize to our people. He's, he spoke he spoke about being me mentored by Comrade Chetty Jagan. But Mr. Speaker, that is something that Comrade Chetty Jagan would never utter. Calling people gullible or easily fooled because they vote for a party of their choice. That is democracy. That is not being gullible. That is being smart. That is using your democratic right. Mr. Speaker, a lot of being said about COVID. And I would like to add my view on the COVID situation. But first, let me commend, let me commend the frontline workers who have been out there every single day, risking their lives and their families to support every single Guyanese, regardless of the, our differences. They have been there from the onset, and they must be commended. Mr. Speaker, we have heard from the opposition we have heard from the 31 members of the AP and UAFC government that the 25,000 25, is not adequate. We have heard so much about the pink slip. Mr. Speaker, the question is, what did you do? What did you do for the people? COVID was in Guyana. COVID was in Guyana since before the election. But you were too busy trying to rig the election. You were too busy running to the courts to decide whether 33 is the majority of 65. You were too busy. What did you do for the people? Nothing. And then we heard another honorable member. We heard another honorable member saying that 10 million that the government is giving to the indigenous communities is nothing. How can you possibly say that when the people would have accepted that with open arms and they welcome it? Because 10 million would, would work towards small economic projects that would bring income to the indigenous communities and create employment for those people because they are more at a disadvantage than us on the coast. That is why our government took the initiative to distribute over $1 billion to the indigenous communities. How can you condemn, how can you condemn such an, such a, such an act? Of, of, of incentivizing or assisting our indigenous brothers and sisters who really need the help, especially during this COVID period. Mr. Speaker, if I may now, if I may now turn to a few comments that were made with regards to the Ministry of Natural Resources. Come into that. And if I may start, if I may start with quarry license, because it seems to be the topical issue. And the honorable holder seems to have a lot of information, which I'm sad to say it is not factual. It is not factual, but that has been the order of the AP and UAFC, bringing half-truths, bringing information. They are divorced from the facts or they're divorced from the truth. Mr. Speaker, our production, our production over the last few years have been between 500 to 600,000 tons of aggregates. That is what we produce every single year for the last three years. Mr. Speaker, the demand for aggregates in Guyana last year was 850,000 tons. It means that we are underproducing we are significantly underproducing, and the AP and UAFC government realized that. And instead, and instead of boosting the production, instead of giving license to people who have the capacity and the resources, instead of giving people who have the capacity and resources, what did they do? They import aggregates. They import aggregates using foreign currency which they were not generating. 
to import aggregates when they could have when they could have boosted local production and create employment instead what they did is to import aggregates and advert it mr speaker our government our government remove that and aggregates so that we can help that sector so that we can help the construction sector mr speaker in five years the APNU AFC issued three quarry license. Three quarry license, Mr. Speaker. And if the Honorable Member had his information correct, he would tell you that one never produced a, a brick or a stone. The other one is the smallest quarry operation we have in the Quarantine River. And the other one, Mr. Speaker, is the one that he claims is a friend of our Vice President. Mr. Speaker, that license was issued under the AP and UAFC government. So the comrade, or the honorable member, seems to be divorced from the fact. But he should have known that because, because the very person used to be his employer. But Mr. Speaker, I like to keep it professional and don't get into personal attacks. But the honorable know what is the relationship between himself and that operator. Mr. Speaker, we have not issued, we have not issued, I want to say clearly, we have not issued any quarry license. So again, the Honorable Member is misleading the House. What we would have issued is provisional permits, provisional permits pending the environmental studies and the other requirements that are necessary. We would have issued that to companies that are, are capable and that have the resources to produce. The member, the member spoke about land management, Mr. Speaker. The member said that we are canceling people up mining permits, that we are canceling mining permits. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this was published in the newspaper by the then APNU AFC government. And it says, to pay, to pay your royalties and your fees, you have until the 15th of April 2018. The 15th of April 2018, which will not be extended. Further to that, Mr. Speaker, there was another, there was another public notice. There was another public notice saying that there was an extension saying that there was an extension to August 31st, 2018. Mr. Speaker, I have a list here of people who have not paid their dues based on this cancellation order. So this cancellation order was, was issued or advertised under the AP and UAFC government. It is not the People's Progressive Party civic government. And besides, if you haven't paid your fees since 2018, and the specific quarry operator he's speaking of, Mr. Speaker, did not pay since 2017. So how is that corruption? How is that corruption, Mr. Speaker? Apparently, the Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, doesn't clearly understand what corruption means. But let me remind him, let me tell him what is corruption. Don't Corru remind us because it's one of the unparliamentary ones. <clears throat> Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Let me remind... The Honorable Member, what is corruption? Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Let me remind the Honorable Member, Mr. Speaker, that we don't get involved in shady deals. When you talk about shady deals, you talk about the Demerara Harbor Bridge 200 million feasibility study. You talk about the billion dollar Dorban Park. You talk about the 30 billion loan to Gaisuku. You talk about the drug bond rental of 40 million dollars a month. You talk about the signing bonus which disappear. We are still looking for the signing bonus to today, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you talk about Block C, which was being allocated to party cronies. It is a good thing the People's Progressive Party, Mr. Speaker, came to government to salvage that. Mr. Speaker, I now come to the Guyana Forestry Commission. And I have heard, Be Mr. Before Speaker, you reach there, sir, you'll need an extension of time. 
Mr. Speaker, I would like to sorry, ask sorry. my colleague to have five minutes to conclude. However, I wish to say sorry, that the sorry, word yeah. corruption is not an unparliamentary word. It is if a member is accusing another of corruption. Honourable but the word Minister. corruption is not unparliamentary, sir. Honourable, Honourable Minister Teixeira, we are going to be circulating the list that comes out of parliamentary documents uh, just before we resume. A uh, mistake from me, Honourable Minister, you, your time is up. You have until 12, 3rd to 7, according to the stopwatch. So uh, then you will get the extension. So my apologies. I'll Thank give you. you back the 1.15 second, sorry, minutes that we, we lost. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I now come to the Guiana Forestry Commission. And we have heard, we have heard stories yesterday because the position of the Guyana Forestry Commission when we took office is that the Guyana Forestry Commission was bankrupt, unable to pay staff, unable to pay basic utilities. That is a fact. That was the position of the GFC on August 2nd, 2020. Mr. Speaker, we have heard yesterday that the People's Progressive Party used 1.3 billion from the Guyana Forestry Commission. Mr. Speaker, it means that the Guyana Forestry Commission was doing well under the People's Progressive Party. Because if, if $1.3 billion was used and almost a billion was inherited by the AP and UAFC government, then it means that we left a viable Forestry Commission to the AP and UAFC. And in five years, they would have destroyed, destroyed one of the best sectors in this country. It is embarrassing to know that our country is covered by almost 87% forests, but yet our Forestry Commission is bankrupt. Yet we are producing at 30 to 35% of our allowable cuts, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday we heard from the Honorable Ramsarup that we are forcing loggers to produce. Mr. Speaker, something is definitely wrong. When you're issued a house lot, it is because you wanted to build a house. When you is your mining land, it's because you want to go and mine. When you is your concession, it's because you want to do logging. So if we are forcing loggers to produce, it is a good thing. I don't see how that is torn negative because the loggers will make money, the Forest Commission, Forestry Commission will make money, the country will make money, employment will be created. So we should be commending, commended for encouraging the loggers to produce more, honorable member. We should be commended for doing that because we are only producing a 30% of our allowable cuts. Our exports have dried up thanks to the People's Progressive Party civic government. We bailed out the commission. We changed the logging policy so that people can export logs, especially the lesser used species today. Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, I will just move quickly to a few other areas. But before I do so, Mr. Speaker, I would like to say that we have been taking a number of steps to ensure that we boost production in the forestry sector. And we are happy to report that the forestry sector has been showing good signs of becoming viable again. Of course, the COVID situation globally will be an issue, but we will learn to navigate through that too, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works, we will be developing new roads and opening up new areas for forestry, for mining. One such road is the road from Kokwani to Oriala. That is a promise fulfilled again, Mr. Speaker. The Bacal to 68th Road and the Puruni Road, which has always been an issue. As a matter of fact, under the AP and UAFC administration, almost all the large-scale operators in the Puruni area had to withdraw because of the condition of the road, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if I may move quickly to bauxite production. And it is very, it is very heartbreaking to hear the Honorable Member Sears who hail from the mining town speaking about Rusal. Mr. Speaker, apparently, and also the Honorable Coretta McDonald speaking about, in fact, the Honorable Coretta McDonald said that the government sent home 300 bauxite workers because they are politically aligned. Mr. Speaker, there is no bauxite company that is state-owned in this country. Mr. Speaker, if the Honorable Member is speaking about Russell, they did that. 
They send home Russell and five, six hundred workers. They send home Russell and Orlando. They chase Orlando for Russell out of this country. They block the river, preventing the company from going into the operation. Thanks to the PPP civic government, we have the company there providing electricity and water for those poor villages along the Corn Barbies River. We are still trying to get the company to go back into operation, Mr. Speaker. So it is the AP and UAFC that reduced bauxite to it is today. Under the AP and UAFC, bauxite declined by over 40 percent, Mr. Speaker. So it is unfair to the workers for these mem the honourable members to come to this house and say that we are not caring, Mr. Speaker. If you look at the areas where these workers are from. They are from Linden, they are from Aichuni, they are from Kukwani, and the Orland of Operation, they are from New Amsterdam. Mr. Speaker, we know these areas are predominantly supportive of the coalition, yet, yet, it shows that they don't care about their own supporters, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if I may quickly go to the big issue, which is oil and gas, I, of course, I would love to have more time. If I may address for us the flaring issue raised by the honorable members Ramjitan and Patterson. Mr. Speaker, it is no fact that we inherited, that we inherited this issue, that we inherited this problem. The EPA permit under the AP and UAFC permit Exxon to flare 14 billion cubic feet of gas, Mr. Speaker. This was the agreement signed by the AP and UAFC government. They signed that, Mr. Speaker, and the Honorable Attorney General will tell you, the same man who's running around in every newspaper now as the desire for environment, give EEPGL a 20-year permit, which is illegal. It is illegal, thank God, that our government corrected that. So in the laser production license, which will expire next year, we will correct their wrong once again. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Now is the correct time <laughs> for you to get the extension. <laughs> Honorable Minister Tashir. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to ask for a five-minute extension for my colleague to conclude his presentation. Thank you, Honorable Minister Tashir. Honorable Minister, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is a motion that was brought and approved by... It was brought by the Honorable Member Partisan approved to be debated in National Assembly. And if I may just quickly go to the last part of it, Mr. Speaker, where it clearly states, it clearly states that we would like to see the LISA permit coming up to speed or up to date with the Payara permit. Mr. Speaker, the Payara permit was signed by the People's Progressive Party government. The LISA permit was signed by the AP and UAFC. And that is the difference. That is the difference, Mr. Speaker. So I'm happy that the Honorable Member realize, recognize that the Payara permit is far more superior and better negotiated than the Lisa permit. Mr. Speaker, our, our hymn tune for the oil and gas sector will and always be transparency and accountability. That is our promise to the Guyanese people. Because we will ensure that oil does not become a curse to our country and to our people. That it will become an opportunity resource. That will become a resource opportunity to our people. And that is why when taking office, a mere few days after taking office, our president would have put together a high-level panel to, to start the consultation on local content. And local content, Mr. Speaker, is important to ensure that every single Guyanese benefit from this sector. Without local content, Mr. Speaker, as some people say, we will get the crumbs. And our government would have realized that. And that is why we are paying so much emphasis on local content. Only last week in this very dome, we had a massive consultation led by His Excellency the president and the vice president with a number of stakeholders. 
We have another month where we will do consultation to ensure that when we draft or when we craft a local content policy that it reflect the true will of our people, Mr. Speaker. Because we realize that local content is important, but at the same time we need to build capacity and we need to <clears throat> train our people to ensure that we develop this important sector. Mr. Speaker, we will ensure that we continue to work and nurture the sector in collaboration with our investment partners and, of course, to derive the benefits from the sector. Mr. Speaker, as we know it, we have eight blocks with 14 international oil companies operating in Guyana, the latest being Qatar Petroleum Company. And, Mr. Speaker, this again is evidence that investors are now flocking our shore. Investors are now coming to Guyana because they have the confidence in the economy, because they have the confidence in the government to come and invest in our country. Mr. Speaker, in the next few years, in the next few years, by 2024, Guyana will see its third FPSO sailing to Guyana. We would have the Lisa Unity and the Prosperity FPSO joining the Lisa Destiny. However, those two FPSO will produce a double the capacity of the Lisa Destiny right now. So, Mr. Speaker, in other words, it simply means that by 2024, Guyana will be producing over half billion barrels of oil per day, per day, Mr. Speaker. And that is why we have ensured that we will invest and that we will use the resources from the oil and gas sector to benefit every single Guyanese through world-class education, health, infrastructure, security. This is what we will ensure that we do, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, one of the greatest problems that we have in Guyana is power generation, the cost of power generation, the reliability of the power generation as well, too. So that is why, Mr. Speaker, our government is embarking on the gas to shore project that was spoken to at length by the Honorable David Patterson. It is a project, Mr. Speaker, that the Honorable himself would have done a study as Minister of Public Infrastructure. So to come to the House and to criticize the project, Mr. Speaker, is saying that <clears throat> you're, you're being two-faced. Mr. Speaker, we will ensure that we pursue with that gas the energy project because that project will reduce our electricity generation by more than 50%, fulfilling another campaign promised by the People's Progressive Party civic government. Mr. Speaker, I know my time is running. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I wish to commend Budget 2021 for passage through this National Assembly. And to those, and to those who are not in support, it means that you're not supporting job creation. It means that you're not supporting investments. It means that you're not supporting cash grants to our children. It means that you're not supporting subsidy to our pensioners. It means that you're not supporting transparency and accountability and a better life for all Guyanese. So I encourage you to get on board and move Guyana forward as one people, one nation, with one common goal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.